thank you for joining me for our short prayer meeting tonight. Have you ever been interviewed? News reporters do that all the time. I enjoy watching them. They set up their equipment, their camera, and then the news reporter approaches people on the sidewalk and he says, can I ask you a question? Let's pretend I'm a news reporter tonight and I would like to ask you a question. Are you a Christian? You would probably answer, yes, I am. And my real question is, tell me, what are the benefits of following Jesus Christ? Now, some people would answer, the benefit of following Jesus Christ, when I die, I will go to heaven. Someone else might say, well, God has forgiven my sins. Or someone might say, God is always with me. God is my helper. Or someone could say, my life has a purpose. I live for God. This is actually a good exercise to realize how many blessings God has bestowed upon us. But here's another question. In your list of benefits, have you included prayer? Have you ever looked at prayer as being beneficial or a privilege? Well, you might say, well, Prayer is something we do or we have to do. Prayer is definitely good, but a benefit? The Apostle Paul had a lot to say about prayer. In his letters, he frequently touched on the topic of prayer. I quickly checked this afternoon, and I found that in his letters to the Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, Timothy, and Titus. And if he wrote Hebrews, in each letter he makes reference to prayer. Take, for example, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. He writes, Pray without ceasing. That means never stop praying. And referring to prayer so frequently and him encouraging all believers to pray, never to stop. I think you will agree with me. He definitely saw prayer as beneficial or as a benefit. Now in Philippians 1.4, Paul writes about his own prayer life. He makes a very interesting statement. He's talking about them and he's telling them that he is praying for them. But let me read. He writes, always in every prayer of mine making requests for you all with joy. Paul is praying and he looks at prayer as a privilege and he does it with joy. Let's look at prayer tonight. How would we explain what prayer is? Take, for example, one of your co-workers or a fellow student in school approaches you uh, and asks you, do you pray? And you say, yes, I pray every day. So this person might ask, what do you do when you pray? Or what do you say when you pray? Or the person might ask, why do you pray? Sometimes it's actually good to stop and to ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Do we pray because our parents taught us to pray? Or do we pray because we feel it's just part of being a believer? Or someone might say, well, it feels there's something missing if I don't pray. Some people they might not say this, but they see prayer sort of like a spare tire. You see, if you have a flat tire, you stop at the side of the road. What a benefit and what a blessing it is to have a spare tire. 
you fix it, and you move on. Prayer, for some people, is needs-based. When in trouble, they pray. When they're stuck, they pray. When they're unable to solve a problem, they pray. When they lose something, they pray. They turn to prayer when they are in need. You're familiar with the story of the prophet Jonah, who's mentioned in the Old Testament. Uh, Jonah was uh, sent by God to the city of Nineveh. He had to deliver a message. But Jonah, looking at the situation, decided not to go to Nineveh. He decided to flee, to run away. When you read this story, you will notice nowhere in the vicinity is prayer mentioned. He didn't pray asking God for advice. He didn't pray regarding a question he had. He simply acted. But listen to this. Not too long after that, when he was swallowed by a big fish, we read, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord. He was in trouble, and he prayed. That's how some people see prayer. When I'm struggling, when I need help, then they pray. A little boy was asked once, Do you pray every day? And he answered, Not every day. On some days, I don't need anything. You see, once we're out of trouble, we help ourselves. Prayer definitely includes our needs, and we're encouraged to bring our needs and our requests to the Lord. It's part of prayer. But we're missing out on a huge benefit of prayer and the real meaning of prayer if we only pray when we are in trouble. You see, prayer turns into something beneficial when it's no longer needs-based. When we pray even on the days when we don't need anything. Even though we're not sick, we pray. Even though we're not looking for a job, we pray. Even though I don't have marriage problems, I still pray. Even though I'm not struggling financially, I am praying. And once we start praying without being reminded, even during the days, during the day while driving, during the day while doing the laundry, while walking, I turn to God and I communicate with Him. I speak to God. And we will realize once we see prayer in that light, Prayer will become so beneficial. It will become a privilege that God has given us when we are communicating with God, not primarily asking for something, but to seek God, to seek His faith. That's a privilege. Someone once said to me, Don't seek the gift seek the giver. And I remembered that, and from time to time I am reminded of this. Very often we seek the gift, and we're back to a needs-based prayer. But who seeks God and communicates with Him? You see, when I seek God, it turns from a business relationship into a personal relationship. I turn to God because I seek Him. I was reminded of my parents. My parents have reached an age where, they're, where they need some help. So we try to help wherever possible. We go there, I pick up some papers, I take them to the bank, pay their bills, write their checks, bring some cash from the bank, and I'm done. I'm on the road again. I'm glad I can help them. 
And then I noticed something. I noticed that they would really love for me to sit down with them and talk with them and listen to them and share with them. They were looking for a relationship, not just me doing their uh, business matters. They want communication. And I see similarities here. It is so easy to do things for God. We run. We work. We're very busy for the Lord. And we can say, Lord, look what I did for you. It's almost like we're following a to-do list and we're being able to accomplish much. And sometimes the thought crosses our mind, well, if that doesn't please God, what I'm doing, what will please Him? Much more pleasing to God is us slowing down and taking time to commun communicate with Him, to talk to Him, to listen to him, to share, to just simply be with him. That is like talking a friend to a friend. And you see, when we begin to talk with God, to really communicate, that is when things will begin to happen in our lives. James, you probably know that he was the half-brother of our Lord Jesus. James writes in his letter, chapter 4, verse 8, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. What he is, is saying, I love this comparison with the way he describes it. What he's saying is, when you draw near to God, it will trigger a response. When I come close to God, He will come close to me. And you see, that is when God begins to work in our lives, in, in, in us personally. Praying people are not interested in themselves, but praying people are interested in God, in communicating with God. I begin to be interested in His will. I am interested in his plan, in his desires, and in his wishes. When I pray, and my goal is to communicate with God, I'm no longer trying to convince God to do what I wish him to do. When I communicate with God, I am interested in what he wants me to do to do and his will and when I begin to communicate with God and are interested in his kingdom and I am interested in his will I realize personally that the peace of God that Paul writes about will fill my heart that all happens while I communicate with my Heavenly Father that inner peace that I so much need. Prayer is, or prayer gives God the opportunity to work in us. You see, when I communicate with God, He reveals Himself to me. When I communicate with God, He makes His power available to me. He changes me. He makes me more usable. He reveals His plans to me. And He fills my empty hands so I can be a blessing to others. You see, prayer is much more than asking God to fulfill my needs and my wishes. Prayer is communicating with the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth and prayer makes God known to me I was reminded of Moses 
We read about him in Exodus chapter 34, verses 28 and 29 this. Moses was on the Mount Sinai, and Moses was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He ate no bread and drank no water, and he wrote upon the ta tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of the testimony in his hand, he did not know that the skin of his face shone and sent forth beams by reason of his speaking with the Lord. Think about this just for a moment. He was in communion. He had communicated with the Lord. And when he came down, after prayer, after communicating with the Lord, the people around him noticed it because of his shining face. Wouldn't that be wonderful if that would happen in our lives? We enter into prayer, into talking with God, and when we're done, my co-workers and my friends, perhaps my family members will notice Ah, he has been with God again. In conclusion, we often miss the point of prayer. We miss the real reason why we should pray. We often think we have to beg God to do things for us or for others. But the real reason for us is when we pray, to enter into a personal relationship with God. How about our prayer life? Do we, like Paul, pray with joy? And I understand now the disciples of the Lord. At one point they came to him and, and they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And I realize that I should make this my prayer as well. Lord, teach me how to pray. David, in Psalm 27, verse 8, writes, When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, O Lord, I will seek. I want to do that. Will you join me? Let's reflect on what prayer is all about. And if necessary, let the Lord direct us which changes need to be made. Join me in prayer now. Our Heavenly Father, we looked at the privilege of being able to pray tonight. What a blessing it is, Lord, to have communion with you, to enter into this personal relationship. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to learn how to pray. Lord, how often was our prayer basically needs-based? We had a need and we prayed. And Lord, you care about our needs. We know that but you're more interested in being with us. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us in our own personal lives to reflect on this important topic of prayer. Help us, Lord, to seek your will. Help us to seek your plan, your wishes, your desires. But most of all, Lord, help us to seek you. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for all the blessings including that we are children of God through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, I pray for our church family during this difficult time we're walking through, that you would help us all be with us and bless us and help us to be a people of prayer. In your name we pray. Amen. May God bless you till we see each other again.